welcome to our 20th annual exhibition of hydrogen and fuel cells. This year we've added batteries, so it's getting more and more broad and exciting. We've been here since 1994. Uh, talking about fuel cell technology. Right now we're going to do something, it's a new format for this uh, forum. We are going to do something like an elevator presentation. If you imagine you're traveling in a building and you get on the elevator and you meet precisely that guy you want to talk to, you know you're on the first floor and he's going to get off at the 10th floor and you have only that space of time in order to present something. We've of course been a little bit more generous, so we're going to allow eight to maximum 10 minutes to present uh, topics uh, coming from the industry. We have five presenters with us. I'm going to introduce them individually. They're going to join me on the stage. And it's, in German, Los Gates. So uh, to welcome our first guest, it's Steve Shemansky. He's director, government business at Proton Onsite. And he's got to leave soon, so he's first on the list. Please welcome with me Steve Shemansky. Okay, thank you. Um, I was originally told I only had five minutes. Uh, now I know I got eight to ten, so I can talk a little bit slower. But uh, I'm gonna, still going to try to keep this a quick overview of you know what we do at Proton and and you know what what's kind of new and exciting uh, in what we're doing. Uh, first of all, just for by means of an introduction for those of you who don't know about Proton, you know, we are a manufacturer of hydrogen, nitrogen, and purified air generators, and I think. Um, most of you probably know us as an electrolyzer company, but we do have uh, product lines in the, in the nitrogen and purified air products as well, and that's primarily for the lab markets. But our core technology is really PEM electrolyzers, and that's what we've been doing since 1996. Um, you know, we are you know, a, a global company. We've got over 2,000 systems installed in over 75 countries. Uh, and we are the market leader in, in PEM electrolyzers, which, as I said, is what we were founded in. And, you know, I always like to emphasize the manufacturing experience. We've been manufacturing PEM electrolyzers now for about 18 years. And on the bottom, you can see the, um, our world headquarters on the left uh, in Wallingford, Connecticut, in the United States. All of our manufacturing is done there. Okay, just a quick overview of the product portfolio, just so you can get a sense of um, kind of what we have for uh, product lines. On the left, you can see kind of our existing commercial product lines. And, you know, as you go from uh, left to right on the screen, you know, we go from smaller to larger. So right now, the current product line is in the range of about 2 kilowatts up to about 180 kilowatts. A lot of people, you know, kind of want to understand what's the kind of the power uh, range. So that's, that's where we are today. It's two to, two to 180 kilowatts. Um, and then along the bottom lines, we've got some, some other, other products, including our lab gas generators and also some hydrogen control systems that we sell to power plants. Um, in terms of the emerging markets, that's a lot of what we're talking about here this week. Uh, and it's, you know, vehicle fueling, uh, biogas, and uh, renewable energy storage, both, you know, power to gas and you know, basically power back to power. You know, one of the things I like to touch on really quickly is the fact that PEM electrolysis has been around a long time. Uh, it's a technology that's proven. And one of the, one of the things that I like to point out when I, when I say that is, uh, you know, we've been selling uh, PEM electrolyzer cell stacks uh, for the Navy, for the United States, uh, the UK, and the French Navy for oxygen generation on submarines. And you know, I think that really kind of underscores the idea that it's a really hardened technology. It's something that the, the military has been using for many years now to produce oxygen on submarines for life support. Just, uh, you know, I'd like to show this slide just to talk a little bit about, um, you know, kind of the scale up experience that we have. You know, I mentioned, uh, you know, one of our earliest products was uh, one that we developed, oops, sorry about that, it was one we developed in, in 2000 on the, on the left, and that's a product that's, that's in the two to five kilowatt range. And, you know, when you talk about cost, you know, cost does not scale linear, linearly with output. And so one of the things that we've been able to show is that as you scale up in, in output, the, the cost per kilowatt gets quite a bit better. So as we've gone from a two kilowatt model to a 40 kilowatt model, 
we realized a you know less than half the cost per kilowatt now just by scaling up to that level. And then as we go from 40 kilowatts to that 180 kilowatt output, now you're talking about we've we've cut the cost about 28 percent of the normalized cost of that original two to five kilowatt system. So as we get bigger, we get cheaper per kilowatt, and that's important for a lot of the applications we're looking at. And you know this bar chart just kind of extrapolates that a little bit to the megawatt scale. And that's what these bars on the, on the right here are. At the megawatt scale, we can get down to less than 10% of the normalized cost per kilowatt of that original system that we put out there, which was on the order of a few kilowatts. So that's very important because a lot of the applications we're talking about, that cost per kilowatt is a real key driver. And so with that, you know, we're talking a lot about megawatt scale electrolysis. You, you know, I've heard from a number of companies that are uh, in development or are releasing products, and we are too. And really, the, the scale is really being driven by the, the, the requirement for renewable energy capture. And so we've got a design approach, um, you know, initially probably a one to two megawatt kind of repeating module. Uh, and it's going to be based on a multiple, uh, you know, uh, cell stack architecture, which is, which is similar to what we do with our commercial products today. Uh, we, we typically will put several cell stacks into a balance of plant um, to capture uh, some economies of scale on the cell stack production. And so right now we're talking about a, a cell stack that's on the order of 250 kilowatts. We have a mock-up of it in our booth uh, right over here. So you can get a size of how big a 250 kilowatt stack is. And the idea is to basically put repeating modules. So a one megawatt uh, system would require four of those stacks. And basically we're looking at kind of an open frame skid kind of uh, architecture, probably packaged in a container for a lot of our applications, although we do have the ability to just put it in a building if that's, if that's a better approach. And uh, so right now we're taking orders for that megawatt scale stack or that megawatt scale system, and um, we'll be making initial deliveries next year. And I think that's it. That's why the slide's not advancing. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, that was Steve Shermansky. Uh, he is uh, scooting off to his next meeting, but his booth is C70, so visit him and Proton on site. Um, anytime during the day, there'll be more information there available. Uh, we're moving on to our next talker, and next on the stage I'll be talking, or presenting will be uh, Roland Kepner, who's Executive VP at McPhy Group. Uh, please welcome with me Roland Kepner. So hello everybody. Um, hydrogen, a new energy for our planet. Uh, this is what we believe, um, and this is what is driving McPhee Energy. Um, I'll make it a very short elevator speech uh, in order to take some questions if you have. Um, well, does that work? Okay. Who are we? Uh, McPhee Energy Group is a European player. We have uh, manufacturing sites in Italy, in Germany, and in France. Uh, we provide integrated hydrogen systems and solutions, basically um, hydrogen generation, alkaline electrolyzers, um, and I'll tell you about alkaline electrolysis technology a little bit more. And we have uh, solid state hydrogen storage, and that's certainly something which is differentiating us. So our portfolio at the moment, we have um, small and mid-sized alkaline electrolyzer, uh, highly industrialized systems ranging from zero to uh, 60 cubic meters per hour. Um, they are produced in, in Italy. We made an acquisition last year. Uh, the second uh, portfolio element in our large electrolyzers. Uh, we have a manufacturing site now in Brandenburg. And here we generate uh, systems which are capable of producing up to uh, 200 no cubic meters per hour, which is uh, uh, basically 400, which is a two megawatt system. And we have a disruptive hydrogen uh, storage technology, which is solid state based on met, uh, metal hydrides. Um, we are addressing, as well as uh, Steve told, uh, basically two main markets. It's industrial hydrogen on site, 
And the other two markets are the, for us the new ones, energy and mobility, hydrogen filling stations, energy storage applications. Um, for the technology, I start with the right one, which uh, solid state. Um, it's certainly a very innovative system. Um, we are not yet where we want to be by means of cost, uh, but at, we are at the right path. You will see what, or what you see at the moment here is the first 100 kilogram solid state system fully functionable and we will deliver it in May to the lighthouse project at the Berlin airport where we have a multi-energy filling station together with Total and Linde. Um, so we're working currently on two different sorts of metal hydrides. It's uh, magnesium and it's uh, iron titanium. Um, we certainly have been able to demonstrate that this technology is working. Uh, it's um, delivering a very safe and secure hydrogen storage technology. Uh, on the electrolyzers, uh, we call it alkaline 2.0. We certainly decided for ourselves to not embark on the PEM technology because we believe the alkaline is a, a very mature technology and it still has a lot of potentials. And this potential we are going to... Uh, unleash. This is why we call it Alkaline 2.0. As I said, uh, we are addressing now a market where we can deliver between one and multi one hundreds of cubic meters per hour. Um, for example, if uh, one of you knows the Audi e-gas plant in Werte, um, where six megawatt of electrolyzer capacity are built, this is uh, based on our technology or the technology we took over from Enatrack Hitech. Um, and very worth to mention, the electrolyzer technology is going up to 45 bars. This, for example, again is the storage system, 100 kilogram of hydrogen. And uh, the next stage will be to pack it much more dense. And this container will in future uh, have 200 to maybe 300 kilograms of hydrogen storage capacity. Um, on the, Itali uh, I say the Italian side, uh, we ramped up the product portfolio. This is a 60 cubic meter per hour system, very dynamic, very flexible. We've optimized it by means of controls. Um, it's uh, based on very standard products we had from our Italian product line, which makes it extremely cost efficient. And this is uh, what we will deliver to Berlin at the uh, Lighthouse project. It's a 45 bar, 500 kilowatt electrolyzer, which can be uh, modular ramped up to two megawatt. And this will be uh, all visible on the 20th of May when we inaugurate the filling station. Come on, and that's about it. Thanks. We have sort of an executive decision here. We think we're going to take questions at the end, uh, if that's all right with you, and uh, continue just to make sure that we finish all the talks on time. But we will return to the subject here. Particularly, I have a question about the solid state storage facilities. That is a really interesting issue. Um, we will continue now, though, with uh, Dr. Simon Bourne. He's CTO at ITM Power. And uh, he'll be talking to us. Uh, is he? Yeah, there he is. Okay. <laughs> Please welcome with me uh, Dr. Simon Bourne. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to go through a few slides to give you um, an understanding of what ITM is about. I'm going to describe some of our technology, and then I've got a few slides at the end which um, give a, a, a flavor of the sorts of projects that we're involved with at the moment. And then right at the end, my final slide, I've got an important announcement which I'd like to make. So first of all, we are um, uh, an electrolyzer company. We are making integrated electrolyzer systems. We take power from either renewable or, um, or the grid. We convert that uh, into hydrogen for injection either into the natural gas network for energy storage as power to gas, or we supply the hydrogen at high pressure into vehicles for green, uh, green, um, uh, green transport. Should I be pressing it? Ah, there we go. Okay, so um, the systems 
um, are fully integrated, and that means they contain everything that is required for the system just to drop on site, connect to water and electricity, and start operating. So all of the thermal management systems, the power systems, all of the control, all of that is included. They're all fully CE marked, and we've also got quite a lot of experience in gaining local compliance in different territories around the world. The, the core piece of ITM is the stack technology. It is PEM. And I'd really like to emphasize three points. The first is modularity. And for us trying to sell into emerging markets, there's often a, a challenge in that almost every customer has a slightly different requirement. And there's a risk in there for us in constantly developing a new product each time. So what we've done is developed a stack platform that's quite flexible. So that means that we have a, a chassis and we can add a certain number of stacks into that chassis to enable us to address a very wide range um, of electrolyzer capacities without that non-recurring engineering expense. So that represents around half a megawatt and um, we can go anywhere between um, 25 and 555 kilograms a day based on that stack in one single container. Rapid response is another important factor. It's something that's quite specific to PEM and that really is, is essential in order for you to be able to assimilate renewable power, which is very rapidly um, uh, changing. It also enables you to qualify your electrolyzer as a piece of equipment that can provide grid balancing services. And what that means for you essentially is that you can get your electricity for a lower price, which means your hydrogen is a lower price. Then finally, self-pressurizing. Um, the R stacks are capable of pressurizing up to 80 bar. That's important because when injecting hydrogen into the natural gas network, um, you, um, unless your electrolyzer is self-pressurizing to a high pressure, you often need to use a compressor. And compressors are quite expensive, they consume quite a bit of energy, and they also require a lot of servicing. So with something like this, you avoid that other part of the system. Um, maybe a little bit difficult to see, but I wanted to drive home the point about uh, durability and intermittent testing. This is an extract from one of our test uh, regimes for the, the large stack platform. It's off for 10 minutes, then on at full power for one minute, and off for 10, and it keeps cycling like that, many, many tens of, cycle, uh, th uh, tens of thousands of cycles. Um, if you zoom in on one of those on events, it actually goes from zero to 100% in um, about a fifth of a second. So now I'm just gonna give you a, a, a brief flavor of the sorts of things that we're doing so that you get an understanding for that. Um, Okay, so a, a system for Boeing. This is uh, used to generate hydrogen um, completely off-grid. The hydrogen is then used to refuel unmanned aerial vehicles. So that hydrogen um, uh, has to satisfy a lot of criteria in order to power a fuel cell ve vehicle for flight. Um, a refueling station in the UK at the University of Nottingham. Uh, again, refueling for materials handling equipment, which we've done with um, uh, Marks & Spencer, a supermarket in the UK. We have um, sold a refueling station into um, California. This is going to be supplying 100% green hydrogen. It's going to be situated at Hyundai's um, uh, uh, main uh, facility in Chino. Another refueler on the Isle of Wight, which is just off the south coast of the, uh, of the UK. We're actually supplying two refueling stations onto that island. And um, earlier, uh, or last week, we announced that we've just taken an order for a further three refueling stations based on PEM electrolyzers that will be deployed in the city of London. And obviously, there's our power to gas platform that we have, uh, we're now operating in, um, in Frankfurt with the Tuga Group, which is a consortium of um, utility companies in Germany. And so I went through that very quickly. The important announcement is that uh, um, being from Manchester, I'm quite passionate about football. And on Wednesday night, Manchester United are playing Bayern Munich. And our booth this year has a video screen. So we're currently in discussion with the Messer about how we might be able to stream that live to our stand. So if anybody does want to come and talk to us on our stand, uh, we hope to have that available on, uh, on Wednesday night. So thanks a lot for your time. And thank you. We'll be returning for questions to that topic. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we are continuing our conversation today, another elevator presentation. I'd like to welcome on the stage uh, Paolo Baird. He's CEO at ACTA, and uh, um, he's the next stop on our elevator presentation. Welcome with me.
Paolo Baird. Thank you. Hydrogen for energy. This is what ACTA is specializing to. And if I can move. So the fuel cell have been demonstrated commercially viable and competitive for batteries. The lack of uh, sufficient hydrogen infrastructure is really been uh, the barrier to fuel cell adoption. We believe that the micro-distributed hydrogen production at the point of site is the fuel cell enabler and it helps a wider adoption of renewables. The technologies that are used to produce hydrogen are traditionally the liquid electrolyte electrolyzer. It's the workhorse of the hydrogen production. It's been used extensively in the industrial domain and uh, is extremely reliable and great experience on, on the system. But then when it comes to hydrogen for energy, the challenges I've uh, recommended the move, as we have seen, to the PEM electrolyzer, to the solid membrane electrolyzer. And this is due to the quick response, is due to the ability to be directly connected uh, with renewables, the ability to take uh, zero to 100% uh, power fluctuation that would be typical of a wind turbine, solar, and the membrane electrolyzer has the ability to, to produce safely directly compressed hydrogen at pressures well above 30 bars, as we have heard. Finally, there is no need uh, to replace uh, the KOH, the liquid uh, electrolyte, and uh, the machine requires very little maintenance. So the membrane electrolyzer is where the world is moving to for the hydrogen for energy. Indeed, the PEM electrolyzer, having solved uh, several of these applications, is now getting out, uh, as we heard uh, from Proton, from uh, the lab scale and from the military type of application where cost was not an issue, to the megawatt scale where the cost uh, of the noble metals and the exotic materials that are used in the construction of the machine are making feasible the adoption of this technology, which is indeed extremely well proven. I've personally seen a, a proton, an electrolyzer that was in operation for back then 16 years. ACTA has been working on innovation. We have innovated the membrane electrolyzer. We have brought the alkaline membrane. This is a revolution in that we do not need the exotic material in the construction, which is used stainless steel. Uh, even the catalysts are just nickel, cobalt. We have an extremely high uh, energy efficiency. The alkaline membrane has the great advantage of not being fooled by metal ions. So not only the uh, components, direct components of the stack, but also all the uh, ancillaries, uh, all the plastic piping, uh, all the rest of material that is in contact with water. It's just plastic as you would use in the hoses in your garden. So cheap, this means not only low cost, but also means 
that rainwater or simply humidity condensation can be used to power the electrolyzer, which is extremely important because renewables many times are on the place of production of grid outside an industrial environment. And so the water quality is really critical. Finally, all this means that the system is simple and robust. ACTA has developed a, pro a full product range of electrolyzers. On the left, uh, you see the 100 liter lab scale electrolyzer, pressure control. Uh, the center is the, let's say, the core of our system is, uh, uh, in this case, a 1,000 liter electrolyzer. On the right is a 2,000 liter electrolyzer. The technology is fully scalable, but for the moment, this is a relatively new technology, so ACTA is focusing on the smaller electrolyzer up to 10 kilowatt of power. ACTA has also been developing the, what we call the ACTA power. On the left, you see the small electrolyzer fuel cell that is on display at our booth. It's a 200 watt fuel cell with a 100 liter electrolyzer. At the center, you have a four kilowatt electrolyzer, a four kilowatt fuel cell with a cubic meter electrolyzer. And finally, on the right, you have a system fully geared for off-grid uh, power storage and uh, back to energy. It's a five kilowatt system. We have one platform and we have many application. We have already five light sites, telco back, providing telco backup power in several countries, especially Southeast Asia. We have a system uh, which are currently on field in uh, UK and uh, uh, in um, Indonesia, providing energy storage. And uh, in Taiwan, we have system in the light fuel cell uh, electric vehicles refueling. And we are now introducing a system also for 350 bar refueling of uh, cars. Our technology is extremely interesting. It's an innovative technology. And we invite you to uh, check on the Engevante Chemie probably the most uh, important uh, chemistry journal, where uh, recently they have published an article on our technology. Our system are on display here at the exhibition. Thank you. And thank you very much. Um, we're coming to our last presentation. Before we address the questions, of course, and the questions will be many, I'm sure, um, up on the stage next, we'll be um, hearing from uh, uh, Dr. Bernd Pitschak. He's from Hydrogenics Corporation. And uh, welcome him with me to the stage, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to present uh, Hydrogenics and its products, especially in electrolysis. So for all of you who are not that familiar with the company, Hydrogenics, uh, founded in 1995, has three main business units. One is called on-site generation. There we focus on industrial hydrogen as well as on hydrogen fueling. Beside that, we have fuel cells, and which is uh, in our power systems division and that is meant for standby power and mobility applications. The last and the newest business segment is energy storage. It's alive around 2008, and there we talk about power to gas. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that, oops. Okay, just a brief overview, what is uh, hydrogen for industrial applications really mean? So we have industries 
who need hydrogen for the production, uh, for quality insurance, and for its good itself. So we're talking about the semiconductor industry, power plants, food industries. These consume typically in between 10 and 30 normal cubic meters of hydrogen per hour. When it comes to glass and steel industry, we're talking larger equipment, starting with 60 kilo, uh, kilo uh, norm cubic meters per hour, going up to 500 norm cubic meters per hour. And what you see over here, oh, the point is not fine. Over here is uh, standard equipment. It's our HiStat 60. It's uh, one of four modules which can be built to larger systems to satisfy the needs of the industry. In the following slides, I just give you an overview of some applications to give you some flavor how it looks in the field. This is an installation in Russia. Uh, in a steel plant, we have an installation providing 500 norm cubic meters per hour to the steel plant. Uh, it's a containerized solution coming up in a 20 or in a 40 foot container, will be lined up, hooked up, connected to it as it is a turnkey solution. It's a low, very low commissioning time required and often set up by the customer itself. This application is also suitable in so-called indoor installations. There you have the advantage that the process part, which you see here, the electrolyzers producing the hydrogen, will be combined with centralized uh, auxiliaries and supply like water treatment and power controls. That saves money, so if an installation is possible inside for larger applications, it's a good choice to do so. I already mentioned that we're also doing fueling stations. This is just one example we have built and supplied in over 50 fueling stations worldwide from the US uh, into Germany and other countries. This is uh, an installation in Hamburg owned and operated by Vattenfall. The fueling station was built by Linde. It's supplying 700 bar as well as 350 bars. We have supplied two electrolyzers to produce the hydrogen. I want to talk about uh, power to gas. So far we have 30 projects roughly in Europe addressing power to gas energy storage. Um, we are supplying into eight projects and four of them are larger than one megawatt. You probably have seen that already. This is Eon's Falkenhagen site in Brandenburg, a two megawatt power to gas installation where the hydrogen is fed in the Ontras uh, transmission natural gas pipeline. The plant was inaugurated in uh, August 2013, and since then it's in full operation. When we're talking about power to gas, we believe in hydrogenics that we're talking larger systems. It could be 20 megawatts, 40 megawatts, or even bigger, like a 100 megawatt plant. And the technology of choice to build up larger system for us, it's a PEM technology. PEM technology allows to build more compact stacks and makes it easier for us to really go into the multi-megawatt class. We have a project in place funded by the NIP uh, from Germany together with our partners, Eon, Solvicor, DLR, Fraunhofer, ESA, and Hydrogenics, where we have to build a one megawatt single stack electrolyzer, which will then be operated in hamburg Reitbrook by Eon. And this unit is currently under build and will be delivered this year. So when we talk about PEM technology, and we have heard a lot of it uh, right now, what we do is we attack as well the size as the cost of the PEM electrolyzer technology. And what you see here is a one megawatt single cell stack uh, PEM, uh, sorry, single PEM stack for, uh, in the megawatt class. This stack consumes one megawatt of electricity, producing 220 norm cubic meters of hydrogen per hour. This is the core for the next level when we attack the multi-megawatt uh, stacks. And you see, I hope you can see that the man is standing uh, behind the stack to give you a, an idea of the ratio. The stack is probably of that height and Please come over to our booth. It's uh, C59. There you can see a model of the stack in its natural size. 
This is a groundbreaking ceremony last year in Hamburg for the one megawatt system and you see a first draft drawing of the one megawatt container. It's a 40 foot container, it's a bit oversized from the container but it allows a better view inside the container so that the visitors can see how the technology really looks like inside. And with my last slide, and please feel free to read the summary yourself, take a look on the picture below. This is an illustration of a 40 megawatt plant. What we do here is we take the stacks, put them in series, what we call trains, and one train has the ability of taking on five megawatts. So by having multiple trains, you easily go from five megawatt, 10, 15, 20, on the other side, another 20. So this is an illustration of a 40 megawatt plant. And you see that we have decentralized supplies that saves also cost. It comes as an indoor installation, as we believe that the larger installations will not come as containers in a row. They will be like an industrial hall with a process plant inside. Thank you very much for your kind attention.